नमस्कार कृष्णकान्त सन्दिक राज्य मुक्त विश्वविद्यालय आज ये अनुषान में आपन स्वागत जाना मैं डर सुकमाया लामा इतिहास विभाग सहकारी अध्यापिका आज ये अनुषान आम आलोचनागा विषय तो हल सोसाइटी रिलिजन कल्चर एंड इकनमी आंड दुप्तारू दिस भिडिओ लेक्चर इज पार्ट अब द पेपर टाइटल्ड हिस्ट्री अफ इंडिया फ्रम प्रि हिस्ट्री टिल द बिगिनिंग अफ थार्टीन सेन्चुरी सी इ and it is meant for the first semester students pursuing ba history for the new course before we move on to the topic let me give you the objectives of this particular video lecture the objectives of this lectures are to discuss the society under the gupta rule to discuss the economic situation under the gupta rule to discuss the religious conditions under the gupta rule and to discuss the culture and art that developed during the or under the gupta rule let us first try to understand the sources that helps us to reconstruct this entire study of the society culture religion and art or economy for that matter under the gupta rule the sources are indigenous literatures of which uh, i have mentioned a few the puranas the shastras the nidhi shastra of narada dramas by kalidas and so many others among the foreign literature i have mentioned about fahian's account and also besides the literature we can also derive a lot of information to study about this particular topic from inscriptions and the coins that were circulated or uh, established during the gupta period Let us first begin with the social conditions or what the what kind of society that prevailed during the Gupta rule what we have understood from all the sources uh, whether it be literary or epigraphic or inscriptions or coins we see that the society was divided along the lines of the caste or varnas and this four castes or varnas were the brahmins the kshatriya the vaishya and the shudra The prevalence of the caste system during the Gupta period is very much understood or the prevalence is you know very very much revealed by the account of Fahian who himself has mentioned the plights or the poor conditions faced by the Shudras and the Shudras were the lowest of the four caste this caste or the varna system that uh, was prevalent in the Gupta period is nothing but the hierarchical st structure or the hierarchical stratification of the society and this particular system gave legitimacy to certain privileges enjoyed by the uh, upper caste the system enforced the pursuance of a prescribed craft or occupation more or less a particular caste a varna was associated or linked with a particular craft or occupation For example the brahmins were assigned the role of pursuing the study of vedas and deal with religious practices and sacrifices etc now these brahmins assumed the highest status they earned the highest status in the society and at the same time their sons and their successors would continue doing the same occupation or pursue the same profession same was the uh, case of people belonging to the other caste however there are references of certain exceptions the brahmins in the gupta society or under the gupta society earned immense honor and respect which is revealed from the inscriptions of the gupta period which mentions the large number of land grants and agrahara lands that were granted or donated to the brahmins such lands were granted and the gupta period marks the increase of such land grants the kshatriyas and vaishyas were also among those caste social groups who enjoyed privileges just like the brahmins despite the disabilities within the caste system intercaste marriage interdining was prevalent during the gupta period there are records which give reference to the intercaste marriage for instance bhanu gupta a kshatriya was married to brahmin ravi kirti Fahian also mentions about the Chandalas a social group which were treated at uh, uh, which were treated who were treated very harshly and they lived in the outskirts 
Among the other outcast social groups were the untouchables or the untouchers and the charmarakars who were considered very very impure. The position of women in the society was low and they were considered as belonging to the same category as that of the shudras. Polygamy was prevalent during the Gupta period which uh, and uh, the records show and the records tell us that the kings, the Gupta kings and the feudatory lords or, or the contemporaries of those times did engage in uh, polygamy. Sati was known in the Gupta age and the Mandasur stone inscription of Kumara Gupta 1 refers to the practice of Sati during the Gupta period. Uh, we now move on to the economic conditions. The seals discovered from Vaisali points to the importance of the city as a center of trade and commerce. From this we get to know that business, commerce were continuing in full swing during the Guptas. These seals also bring into light the working of the guilds or shrenis under which the industries or handicrafts were organized. The guilds or shrenis were formed by the bankers, the artisans and the traders. The Indoor Copper Plate inscription mentions about the guild of oil men Tailaka Shreni. The Mandasaur inscription also mentions a guild of silk weavers, Pattavaya Shreni. Money economy was the base of Gupta Empire as revealed by the circulation of the coins in gold, silver and copper. With regard to the construction of the public utility works, mention must be made of Sudarshana Reservoir originally constructed during the time of Chandragupta. The next work is mentioned in the Gandhar stone inscription which talks of the construction of temples, tanks, causeways, parks, etc. Similarly, the Mandasur inscriptions also mentions how Lata Vishaya was decorated with viharas and temples. Here, Vishaya means districts. Besides trade and commerce, agriculture provided the backbone of the Gupta economy. And Amarakosha has mentioned various types of crops that were produced during the Gupta period. Similarly, the literary text and inscriptions also mention a large section of officers appointed for the purpose of collecting revenue. As far as the soils or the kind of lands that, that, were, uh, that existed, Amarakosha mentions 12 types of soils or the lands. The cultivable land were termed as Shetra and the untilled or the uncultivable land was termed as Kila or Aprahata. Land grant offers a lot to the historians as a, as a source material. The land grants of the Gupta period tells us not just about the land measurement but also about the quality of the land whether it be agricultural or non-agricultural. There was a diversity in land measurements during the Gupta period. Irrigation works were practiced during the Gupta period and as we have, uh, d uh, as we talked about earlier, the construction of tanks and ponds, causeways, parks were already mentioned, have been mentioned in the contemporary copper plates. What is very interesting to note during the Gupta period, especially when it comes to land economy, we see that there was a growth of the or, or not just the growth but the emergence of a landed intermediaries during this period. We have already discussed earlier that uh, the Brahmins were donated a huge areas of land for religious purposes and also administrative officers were, were offered lands as form of remunerations and as a result of which the Donis would own the land but they did not cultivate it. As a, and we see that this three-tier system is mentioned in some of the text where we find mention of the term Mahipati or the king, Swami or the one who owns the land and Karshaka or the cultivator. This three-tier uh, character itself tells us that there was a class of landowners who were not the actual cultivators. As a result of which the burden of the entire economy fell on the actual tillers or the cultivators. Their position however declined in the society, especially the practice of vishti or unpaid labor made their conditions more worse. Slaves were also used to, uh, to work in the fields by their masters. Female slaves were exploited in the Gupta period.
The Gupta period is marked by craft production of various types and it ranged from ordinary household items to luxury items. Amarakosha and Brihat Samhita mentions about different categories of craftsmen. And we have also, uh, as, as earlier, we, see, we, we have seen that some of the strainies or guilds were constituted by the artisans and the craftsmen. Next, we move on to the religious conditions. Brahminical Hinduism was practiced at a large scale. Vedic sacrifices, termed as Ashwamedha, was revived by the Gupta rulers. Various other forms of sacrifices were also prevalent. Most Gupta rulers were worshippers of Lord Vishnu and they called themselves Parama Bhagavata and they introduced coins with Lakshmi Garuda, the vehicle of uh, Vishnu and Vishnu's wheel Chakra. Temples dedicated to Lord Vishnu were constructed under the patronage of the Gupta rulers and this finds mention in the inscriptions. Saivism was also present as Shiva was worshipped under various names and this it finds mention in the inscriptions. Coins with bull figure, bull which is associated with Shiva's Nandi. Such coins were circulated during the times of the Gupta ruler. The Bihar stone pillar inscription and other inscriptions mention the construction of a group of temple dedicated to divine mothers including goddess Shakti. And here we can come to the conclusion that Shaktism was also prevalent at that point of time. Gupta coins show goddess Durga seated on a lion or slaying a lion. As far as Hinduism was concerned, the Gupta rulers, even though they, they followed Hinduism, they did not impose it on their subjects. The result was the existence of other religion during the Gupta rule besides Hinduism. Buddhism, for example, flourished and Sanchi and Saranath continued to remain great centers of Buddhist learnings. Inscriptions refers to the endowment or donation of a village as a gift to the Bihara in Sanchi along with dinars or coins for feeding with dikshus. Two images of Buddha bearing the inscription of the Gupta rulers, especially Kumara Gupta II and Buddha Gupta was found at Saranath. Jainism also flourished during the Gupta rule. The construction of the image of Jinavara Parshva was mentioned in the Udayagiri cave inscription. Similarly, the Kahom stone pillar inscriptions refer to the endowment in favor of Jainism that was made. We also see that sun god was worshipped during the Gupta period. The Mandasur inscription of Kumara Gupta 1 records that a guild or shreni of silk weavers built a temple for the sun god. Now let us move on to the cultural development that, uh, was, uh, that, was take, that was taking place under the Guptas. First we will look into the literature and its development. Learning was at its peak during the Gupta period. Such terms like the Acharya, Upadhyaya, Sishya uh, have been mentioned in the inscriptions. And besides the Vedas, Vedangas, Puranas, Mimamshas and others also were included within the subject of study. The learned Brahmins were often well versed in all such areas of knowledge. Lessons were imparted orally. Fahian during his course of travel didn't find any written text except for disciplines in Pataliputra, two copies of Sutra and other and some abstracts from Abhidhamma. So basically what we understand here is this that the teacher would pass on his knowledge to his shishyas or to his students orally. Sanskrit replaced Prakrit as the medium of instruction and the Gupta inscriptions were written in Sanskrit. The Gupta rulers patronized the spread of Sanskrit. Kalidasa wrote his dramas and epics in Sanskrit. Other Sanskrit writers of the time were Shudraka, Vishakadatta among the few. The Gupta rulers were themselves great poets like Samudra Gupta whom Harisena has himself termed as Kaviraja. They were equally accomplished music, musicians. Most of the Gupta rulers were not just proficient in literature, but they were also they also had great taste in music. Contemporary feudatories of the Gupta kingdom too had knowledge of various branches of study. Uh, the inscriptions that uh, belong to the time of the Gupta rule themselves 
speak a lot about literary brilliance. The Allahabad Prashasti, the Mandasore inscription, the Mehrali inscriptions are an example of the literary brilliance. Fahian mentions Udyana, Gandhara, Mathura, Punjab, Pataliputra as centers of learning due to the existence of viharas or residency colleges. Both religious and secular texts were produced during the, the Gupta period. Coming to art, Gupta art finds its expression in coins, sculptures, and monuments. When we talk of coins, we have already discussed earlier that coins in both gold, copper, and gold, copper, silver were being uh, uh, produced and circulated. And the coins are were of various designs. The pattern that was followed was a portrait of the king in the obverse and a goddess along with its associated symbols in the reverse. As far as sculpture is concerned, the sculptures are connected to the religion then prevailing. Cyber culture or any of the sculptures that are related to Saivism were found at temples located in Kanpur, Diogar, Allahabad, Ajmer, Kho and Bhumra. Saiva images or lingas were found basically. The sculptures depicting the various phases of Krishna's life is found in Diogar, Jodhpur, Udayagiri hills. Buddhist images and statues and Saranath are prominent specimens of Gupta art. The Gupta sculptures made effort to eliminate those features that indicated the foreign origin of the Buddha image. The image of Buddha seated in act seated in the act of preaching at Saranath is a masterpiece of Gupta art. Images of Buddha were installed in the religious spaces. Bodhisattva culture also dominated the Gupta sculptural art. The Gupta art seems to have been influenced by Brahmanical sources and this is revealed by the featuring of the different gods from the Brahmanical pantheon in some of the temples. Two schools of art developed under the Gupta rule, Mathura and Benares. Mathura was the oldest one and mottled red stone was basically used as, a, as the material and it continued with the old Kushan Gandhara tradition of art. The Banaras school, however, used Chunar, red, uh, Chunar sandstone and its artistic feature was free from any influence. The Pataliputra school of art features the metal images of Buddha found in Nalanda and Bhagalpur district. Temple architecture under the Gupta period is marked by the use of stone masonry, small flat roofed temples sometimes surrounded by the pillared halls are characteristics of the early Gupta period. The doors of the Garbha Griha were decor decorated or you can say ornamented with beautiful foliage and floral designs. The Gupta period also saw the development of paintings. The Chitra Sutra talks about the paintings of this period. The Ajanta paintings and paintings in the Buddhist cave in Bagh must be specially mentioned here. The Ajanta paintings are religious in nature, while the paintings at Bagh tend to be more secular. Here I would like to give you certain pictures that talks about the Gupta art. And the pictures here are of the Sanchi temple, the Buddha image at Saranath, and the Ajanta paintings. If you look into the Sanchi temple, here, as I mentioned above, the temple has a flat roof and it is surrounded by the pillar halls. So you see that this, this was the pattern that was followed during the Gupta period. And on the other hand, we also have the image of uh, Buddha uh, sitting in a preaching position as well as the Ajanta paintings. So these were some of the pictures that were covered for this particular topic on Gupta art. And with this, we come to the end of today's video lecture session. Thank you very much.